Hi there everyone, welcome to the Royal Society. We're joined by a very special guest who's in London today. This is Aileen MacDonald, friend of ours. She's a maths teacher, artist, science communicator, TikToker, everything. One of the things she happens to be really into though is stone and rocks and things mm -hmm. like that. I told Keith that, Keith said, I got your back. And he's got these out for us. Keith, what have we got here? We've got some classified papers that have some inscriptions in and we know quite a lot about those. And we have a volume of stuff that we know almost nothing about, again, with inscriptions on. Well, let's take it away, shall okay. we? Okay. Keith, you say inscriptions, you mean things that are carved into rocks. That's right. The first one isn't quite carved into rocks, though. I thought, let's get something Scottish out. Uh, and in this volume, which is a whole batch of material about um, heritage matters, we have this little printed flyer that ah. was preserved by the Royal Society and this is quite a fun thing. You can see it's decorated with with coins. Mm. Uh, An avocado? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well it's uh, it looks like a stone axe. Ah. We've got whereas Mr James Sutherland, master of the physic garden at Edinburgh, mm -hmm. Scottish connection, <laughs> uh, does design to cause cut and print figures of several curious coins not yet published, particularly all the coins extant in this kingdom of Scotland. So he's going to do a study of all Scottish coins. All persons who have any coins, not current, symbols, inscriptions, seals or any curious monument of antiquity that they would be pleased as the promoters of so public a design to give in the same to any goldsmith shop in Edinburgh. So he's asking people who have gold coins uh -huh. to give them to him. Reasonable good plan. request, yeah. Yeah, good give plan, me, I'd say. Give me your coins for science. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has an antiquarian purpose. He's going to draw them all, he says. Uh, and uh, he doesn't mention giving them back anywhere, though, does he? No. <laughs> so these are specimen coins. This is the sort of thing 16, that he might 19. want. So there's probably a few Roman coins in there, mm. quite standard stuff. But he's, he's looking to trace the history of Scotland through its, through its coinage. So even in those days, Scotland had the slightly different money, but still legal yep. tender everywhere? Yep, so yeah. different different mints, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not seeing a whole lot of rock and stone here. No, no, this is true. Let's have some proper rock, yes, shall we? Yes, let's yeah. rock. Ah, oh, that's now, how's oh, that for cool. a rock? Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> Keith, I thought you'd lost your mojo with that I first know, yeah, That's yeah. more like it. So, is this some carvings? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice spirals as well. Yeah, that's right, it's a standing stone yep. that's been carved. We know the person who sent in this particular paper and drawing, mm -hmm. uh, and that was Anders Celsius. From temperature? That's the guy, oh. yeah, the very guy, yeah. yeah. Look at that, dropping <laughs> science bombs. There you go, yeah. <laughs> What's Celsius doing drawing rocks? Well, well, Celsius was on an expedition at this time, so uh -huh. he's, he's on an expedition, he goes up to explore northern Sweden and, and Finland. In addition to doing astronomical observations, he, he does some other things as well. He, he yeah. sees a standing stone, so he thinks the Royal Society would be interested in it, records it, sends it to the Royal Society. Wow. He's writing in Latin so that mm -hmm. the, the gentlemen of the Royal Society can understand what he mm -hmm. was saying. De Runus Heligenesis. So Heligoland, I think that's probably going to be. Is this Celsius writing himself? This well, you can, see, you can see here, Olavo Celsus. <laughs> so he's the Latin form of his name. <gasps> oh, that's nice. So these are the things that were so carved these onto are, the Yeah, exactly right. So these this are the... looks like music notes. Yeah. If you've ever played Zelda Ocarina of Time, this looks exactly like um, Epona's song. Again, look at this inscription here. Is this some sort of number system going on? This is really cool. The Royal Society has a lot of what it calls scrapbooks in its collections, uh, and that's usually material that they didn't quite know what to do with, mm -hmm. uh, didn't quite know where it came from, and we've got a, a scrapbook of inscriptions here. So uh, let's, let's have a look at a few of those. Oh, okay. So is this a, a rubbing? Is that why it's backwards? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So you, you're kind of reading back yeah. to front, if you like. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, in a way, it's quite nice that it's probably rubbed directly from yeah, the original artefact. took a piece of paper, stuck it to the rock and rubbed a pen on it. We don't know where this was from, though. It's we we it's don't. A I mean, it, it's a mystery. So we'll what? see some of the things later in this volume that we've got more of an idea of. But yeah, a little bit of research would probably turn up where the originals of these were. I think it's so cool that things in rocks 
can last so long that it undoes people's knowledge of who even wrote it, why it was there. Keith, do we even know where this came from? Like who donated it to the society? Or? We don't. It, it needs some research. Yeah, obviously lots and lots of things were given to the Royal Society over the years. Mm -hmm. We've usually got a record of it, so it would be recorded in the journal books uh, quite often in uh, a very kind of uh, vague description. Uh, it's there, it just needs somebody to delve into those books, read through <laughs> them and find out. And of course, with something like this, which is a complete blank, when was it given? 17th century, 18th century, 19th century? It's a lot of reading to do to find out who the original donor was. I know Brady likes a nice picture. <laughs> A very nice picture. Yeah. Nice civilised tea time stabbing someone in the head. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they are stabbing someone in the head. Whoa. My life now. Some nice okay. gouache, gouache studies here yeah. on statuary. This would be a very fashionable outfit, I mm. think. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, a drawing of the same yeah. one. Uh -huh. yeah. And the style of the handwriting there looks like late 17th, early 18th century. We've got some pottery. Pots pottery there, yeah. This person's very into mirrors. It's the kind of artefact that would survive and, and yeah. be collected. Yeah. Eliane, we said at the start that you're yeah. quite interested in stone and yeah. rock and inscriptions. Uh -huh. What is it about stone and rock that uh, captures your mind? Everything about it is so interesting. So even at the atomic level, um, a lot of stones or minerals have this lattice structure. And, you know, I'm a big old maths nerd. Uh, <laughs> so um, just from that level, they're so cool. And then it's it's kind of nature's archive. You know, you've got fossils all the way through the years. Geological formations kind of let you know what happened in a landscape throughout time. It just preserves so much information if you know how to read it. Funnily enough, mm. just before we started recording, someone's eye was caught by this book here. <laughs> this, this wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> it's a fossil book. Keith, can we have a look? Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, go on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what we're going to find in here, but we're with a fossil fan. We're two yeah. fossil fans. Keith is a very big fossil enthusiast oh, as well. So are you not? Are you saying, are you outing well, yourself no, as I just, not no, a fan I'm of just, fossils? I know when I'm outgunned. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. No, 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 oh, now you're talking. Elephant teeth, do we think? Maybe a uh, mama. So is this, this is sort of like an encyclopedia of fossils, is it? Or? Yeah, so this looks like a, a plates volume, so there should be a text volume to it go seems along to with this. Mostly be about elephants. Yeah. Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus. Ah! <laughs> there we go. So these are all large mammals. So cool. <laughs> do you ever go looking for fossils when you're I on your adventures? Absolutely do, yeah. There's, like, do you want me to just nerd out about fossils? And yeah, no. things? Like, I'll leave these guys to it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't know this about fossils, this has got to be the number one thing to know, is more than once in the geological record, all of the corals have gone extinct and then just come back again. It's like nature evolved corals twice, like corals have to be. Um, which is, it makes me think a lot right now about, you know, coral bleaching and things that are happening. This is going to be quite a large extinction. So will the corals come back again? They, they have already. Even fossils. So like there's things like trilobites, their eyes are calcite. So the eyes of trilobites fossilize and they're the only animal in the world that has eyes that can fossilize. But as a result, you can tell a lot about the topology, not the maths topology, like the landscape topology of where the trilobites lived. Mm. Because if they've got eyes on sticks, you think, oh, maybe they were in really silty water. It was like muddy and they had to look around. If they've got kind of crescent side eyes, um, maybe they didn't need to look above them, so are they kind of underneath a layer of sand? Are they in a cave? Something like that. You can tell a lot about other animals that were there, predation. Um, oh, there's just so much information if you can pull it out. And I just think nothing that is jelly really fossilizes. So there was probably loads of other animals that mm -hmm. we didn't know about. Um, there could have been a jellyfant that we have <laughs> no idea about because it wouldn't maybe leave a trace fossil that wouldn't properly fossilize. I'm, I'm completely obsessed by the idea of a jellyfant now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all of these fossils are the real deal. These weren't made of jelly, obviously. Yeah, it's yeah. something that actually fossilised. Some great images as well. I did, in my second year of university, an elective on invertebrate paleontology. And we had to make like a lab book, which was kind of like this. You know, you sat in a big room with loads of fossils and you have to draw sketches. 
I misunderstood the assignment quite badly. Um, <laughs> I thought that we were supposed to be producing something that was fun to read. And it was supposed to be much more scientific and I put in like little poems and stuff. And so at one point I found a trilobite and the plural fins, which are like the, the spines that go along the side, were much, much longer than they should have been for that particular uh, species. And so I wrote a poem about how it could not be what it was labelled as and convinced my professor to relabel it as something else. <laughs> and if you found a fossil that was mm -hmm. like really something different yeah. and new, who would you name it after? Oh, <coughs> well... <coughs> should have, should have, Brady. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> you can't name things after yourself, no. unfortunately. No. Yeah, uh-huh. No. Yeah, uh -huh. Do you know, I've got, it's going to have to be Brady. Well, thank you. Thank you for that spontaneous decision. Yes. <laughs> when we find that jellyfant, then we name it yes. after Brady. Yeah, okay. I don't want to be named after a jellyfant. <laughs> <laughs> I've been out to places where it's very muddy and it's dry, and you see exactly the same thing today. A geology sediment is continuing. It never stops. I think it was Hutton said that the present is the key to the past. You look at what's happening today and you then figure out what happened then. I can't believe that you've actually got me excited about fossilised <laughs> mud cracks. <laughs> there you go, people. <laughs> but the dinosaur footprints are better.